Happy New Year and welcome to our episode for this brand new year. And today on the episode, we're talking about something that's really fun and exciting for us. We're reviewing our first year of podcasting. And we're big believers here in reflecting and looking back on our business so that we can make a plan to move forward. Because the truth is, you can't get to where you want to go without kind of knowing where you've been in the past. And I cannot believe it's been a year. Like I... It's just baffling my mind right now that I'm sitting here like, we've done this for a year? I can't believe that. But I am so grateful for it. And I'm just really excited to reflect a little bit because sometimes we get such in the nitty gritty, uh, Mm -hmm. just going, 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 that we don't always take the time to pause and look back and go, man, look what I did. Like, Mm -hmm. that's pretty good. And Mm -hmm. we get get bogged down like, this is hard work and I'm tired and what should we keep doing this? And then it's like, no, this is good work. So- I'm excited to talk about this today. It's really easy to just look at what we haven't done because you got to know that Lisa and I have a long list of things that are still on the list. Yes. But what we really want to focus on today is what we have done and what God has invited us into and what we've actually said yes to. And so Lisa, I think that we have a really great story of how we met and how we ended up today. And so would you, I, you kind of do a better job telling this story. So would you share this story with our listeners to remind them of of where we started to get to where we are today. Yes, I would love to. I love telling this story because it's near and dear to my heart. So in about February of 2022, uh, I was starting to want to pivot in my business and do some more online coaching, but I just felt really overwhelmed with like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to go. I just was feeling really overwhelmed and like, I didn't know how to start. Well, Sarah and I are friends on Facebook. Our parents are friends. We've been acquaintances, not really friends, but acquaintances with Facebook friends. And she posted like, hey, I'm doing something new. I knew she was a school administrator. And so she's like, I'm doing something new and I'm doing coaching. And it just really intrigued me. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to reach out and just say, hey, I'd love to hear about your journey, what you're doing. Because ultimately, selfishly, I was like, please help me do what you're doing. (laughs) I love that. So, um, I Facebook messaged you and I just said, Hey, I'd love to have coffee with you. I'd love to hear about what you're doing. And you said yes. And we met at Caribou Coffee, which is kind of in between both of us. It's about 15 or 20 minutes from each of our houses. And we sat down and I think we, I think we talked for like four hours and Mm -hmm. it was just like, here's what I'm doing. Here's what you're doing. How's your business? How's your family? I I don't actually, I don't even think we talked about our families. I don't think we talked about any of that. I think it was all business. Yeah. Yeah. And it was such a breath of fresh air to have somebody who, yeah, one, it was genuinely interested in me, uh, was wanting to be, have hear about my successes, but also wanted to help me. And I wanted to do the same for her. And Mm -hmm. so it just felt like this beautiful thing. And then from there on, we're like, let's meet monthly. And we did it. We both committed to doing it. And we, we did it and we met for, uh, several months, probably six or seven months. And every time mm-hmm. we got together, it was like, we're just, I don't have that much time today. Let's meet for two hours. And then four hours later, we're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I really have to go now. Yes. But, and it was mostly about business. I mean, of course we talked about our families a little bit here and there, but honestly it was almost all business. And it was just so great to have somebody to kind of mastermind with and to mm-hmm. really just bounce ideas off of and, and encourage each other and despair with one another and all of that stuff. So, you know, you were really looking for someone to help you get to where I was. And I was really looking for someone to just be an encouragement to me because I was so alone in my business. I had quit my job. I didn't have a lot of people, friends, relationships with others in this industry in the, in the online world. And so I really think that that moment was an answer to prayer for both of us and that God said, Hey, I see your needs and I'm going to bring you, bring you guys together. And, um, it, you know, I'd love to say it's been, you know, all unicorns and rainbows since then it hasn't because that's not the way relationships work, but we have really walked together through some hard times together individually, um, to get where we are today. And after about eight months, you said, Sarah, let's start a podcast together. We both have such good things to share. Let's do this. And I think my initial answer was, I I don't know. I need to think about it. It took me a few weeks to come around. And then once we both said yes and said, let's do this, it's scary. We don't know how to get started, but we're just going to do this together. It's kind of been, that's all she wrote. We've stepped out and, and done what God's asked us to do. I think we both wanted to start podcasts on our own. 
and it, it's very overwhelming having a podcast. And we've both worked for as a virtual assistant for someone who does have a podcast. And so we've seen what goes into it. And so we definitely did not go into it uh, innocently. We knew what was coming. And mm-hmm. I was like, there's no way I can do this by myself. And Sarah, mm-hmm. you thought the same thing. And so we're like, why don't we do it together? We can share the workload. And also it's just fun to have a partner in something and mm-hmm. being an, an entrepreneur by yourself can be really lonely and um, frustrating and, you know, sad sometimes because you're just by yourself. And so mm-hmm. the thought of doing a project together was really intriguing to me. So I'm so glad we both said yes. Me too. I'm glad pu- God pushed us in that direction. What we're going to spend a couple of minutes with you doing is walking back through the last year and kind of sharing our journey and the numbers and just being really open with you about this process so that if you're thinking about starting something new in the new year, if you're even thinking about starting a podcast, you can hear what our journey has been. So you can kind of go into that process with your eyes wide open too. And here's the truth about podcasts that Lisa was talking about. You know, it it is hard to start a podcast. Only 17% of people who start a podcast make it past 50 plus episodes. It's just a lot of work and it can be a regular grind week after week, month after month to put out that content and only 17% of people who start actually get to that point. And 50% of podcasters, half the people who start one do eight episodes or less. And I think this is the number one thing when people hear that I have a podcast, they're like, I want to do a podcast. And I feel somewhat bad sometimes because I tend to be a little bit discouraging because I'm like, okay, that's so awesome. I love that you want to do a podcast, but it is a lot of work and you have to be really consistent and you have to commit to doing it consistently. And so if you just, if you're like, I want to start a podcast and you do four episodes and then you, you never do it again. Cause you realize how much work it is, or you get distracted by other things or get busy with other things. So being able to make it past the 50 mark is, is huge for us. So when we hit that 50th episode, it was like, yes, we did it. <laughs> yes. We celebrated that for sure. And the, the truth is, is that Lisa and I went into this process knowing that the first six to 12 months of this was really going to be about setting up systems in place and getting um, some routines and workflows, templates and rhythms that worked for us because we're building the podcast business on the side of our own businesses. So this isn't the only thing that we do. And we knew we didn't want to sacrifice what we were doing in our own business in order to do this. So as you listen today, just know that that was really our focus was getting those systems in place, figuring out our audience and our offers so that we would know after six to 12 months what that was and feel really good about going into the year. And so we're going to share some numbers with you um, of what we've done in this last year. Uh, We did create and produce 58 episodes. That's more than one a week for all of 2023. We had seven guest episodes from friends and people we knew in the business sphere on because we wanted to add value to our business. We did four solo episodes in December to just try something new and and to, you know, share some value individually. And we were super excited that in May of the, our first year, we had already hit 1,000 downloads. That's that's a big number. And in some ways, you know, people are getting 1,000 downloads a week, which is fine. But this was a great start for us. And so the fact that we had 1,000 people listen to our podcast, that felt really good to us. And so sometimes we get wrapped up in these numbers of like, I'm not as successful as so-and-so. That's not the way we looked at it. We tried to be really like, you know what, we hit this milestone and that's great for us because we're building something that is brand new. And so doing that. And then in in October, we were able to hit the top 10% of podcast episodes. And that is huge number. Even though our numbers are still, they feel small to us, being in the top 10%, that is a big deal. And, and in the category that we are in, there's over 3 million podcasts. Mm-hmm. And so The fact that we're in the top 10%, that feels really good and a big accomplishment. We were clear about our goals and our goals was to do this consistently and to put systems in place. And we really did that. And and our numbers show that it's working. It's slow. But all we worked on this year was comparing our progress to our own progress, Mm -hmm. not everyone else's. 
and where they were. It was what were we doing and how were we doing that? And were we doing it in a way that was super sustainable for us? Because we didn't want to get to episode 25 or 50 and then quit because we had burned out on doing the work. We also went into this knowing that we didn't have any startup money. So we were funding this ourselves. And so we had to invest some of our own money, which wasn't a ton of money, but we had to invest in equipment. We had to, we wanted a website. We wanted like a customer service management. We, we needed email sequence you know, all these sort of things that we know how to do in our own businesses already, which is very helpful that we know how to do those things. But we needed to be able to to have those for this podcast in order to make it run smoothly. And so we had to invest in our own business, which was great. We did that. And but the good news is, is that by July, we were able to pay all of that back by money that we had made through our podcast. And again, that was something else that we wanted to be sustainable and we wanted to be able to fund this on its own so that we were not constantly having to give up of our own money. Now, if you're doing a podcast from your own business, it's your business, it's your podcast is your lead magnet leading you into your business, which is great. But ours is like a separate business. It's totally different. So it it just worked out differently. And just for numbers in general, I don't have them specifically in front of us. I think we probably invested a total of six to $700 of our own money. Starting a podcast really does not have to be expensive. I think the biggest investment you need to make is a really good microphone. That's Mm -hmm. probably the biggest one. And you don't even have to spend a ton of money on that to get started. You can get a good one for 70 or $80, but you do need to have a good microphone. We've invested in some headphones and like Lisa said, you know, we wanted an easy way to create a website. We were in, we were willing to invest a little bit of money on the front end to make that process easier. So you really can start a podcast for, um, you know, not a lot of money. And especially if you already have a business, then you just reinvest what you're already making in your business to start that. Um, we made our money this year by doing retreats because that is what we love to do. We love to take women away from the busyness of their life and, and go out and retreat away and also get a lot of work done. And so we've had ladies come on our retreats. That's how we've made money. We are now operating in the black and actually starting to make money in the business um, through those retreats and also through our empowerment calls. And and this year, like we said, has really been about figuring out those systems, figuring out our offer and what's really going to sell to our audience. We started with zero in our audience. And so we've taken this year to really focus on those offers that are going to are going to actually serve our audience well. One of the other things we really tried to do is that serve you, our listeners, really well by having guests that are going to be really helpful and to give you good content and good value. And so we were able to have seven guests. And so I'm just going to read these off to you and these episodes, you can go back and listen to them because I think there's some really good information on there. We had Kristen, episode 12, she talked about SEO. We had Beth um, in episode 18 who talked about messaging. Uh, We had Barbara in episode 23 who talked about accounting and finance. We had Sarah in episode 34 talking about networking. We had Garrett in episode 38 talking about money anchors and how that can be a problem in some of our businesses and just changing our mindset around money. In episode 44, we talked with my friend Joe about finding your niche and how how to get into that and why that's important. And then in episode 50, we talked with Jennifer about crisis proofing your business and when something catastrophic comes your way, how to be able to still maintain your business throughout that. When I was making that list of all the people we had on our episodes this year, I was like, wow, we had so many good and very diverse people um, with different topics on our podcast this year. And I am super excited about the people that we already have lined up to come on the podcast for this year. Um, so we've worked really hard to provide value and just different you know, niches and, and topics for you with those guests that will be coming on this, um, this year. I'm excited about those coming up. I can't wait for you guys to hear those. So the next area that we want to reflect on a little bit about this last year, our first year of podcasting, is w- where we play our importance in our business. And I think a lot of people go into business because they want to make money. I mean, obviously that's a business, otherwise it's an expensive hobby. The way that Lisa and I approached this for our podcast in particular was that we started out with a foundation of a, of a relationship because we know, especially as Christians and especially as Christian women, that we need relationships. We need other people and they really are the most important thing. We went into this knowing that and, and really emphasizing that and having that as a priority that our relationship as friends is more important than business any day of the week. Yeah, that's 
really key in that I want to love and support Sarah more than this podcast. And if there's something that is going wrong, we need to talk through that, but also knowing what her heart and hearing that and listening to that. And that is really important. The other thing I would say about a partnership is that Sarah and I are very equal in a lot of the ways we Mm. do things, a lot of the way we think, our work ethic, our work level, you know, we do things similarly and we're, we're both very quick. We both are very good decision makers, you know? So having somebody, I feel like the great, just being equally yoked, you know, Mm. we have, we're very similar in that. I know if I ask her to do something, she's going to do it. And I know she knows if she asks me to do something, I'm going to do it. And so if you were to walk into a partnership like this where somebody has to carry more of the load, I mean, there's obviously times where Sarah carries more, I carry more. It's Mm -hmm. just kind of like a marriage a little bit in that in that respect. But for the most part, I know that if she says she's going to do something, she does it. And same for us. And that has been a huge for me because that I trust her Mm -hmm. and I know that she has the best intentions and I know she's going to do what she says she's going to do and vice versa. And so I think that's been a huge part of it. Not to say that we have been done this perfectly and that we haven't had bumps along the way. We certainly have. We've been this morning, we have talked through some stuff and it was like, oh my gosh, this is really hard. But at the end of the day, it's like, this is what we love and Mm -hmm. this is important. And I love doing it and I love doing it with her. Ditto to all of that. And I think that that has been really intentional for us. Not I think, I know that that's been really intentional for us of saying, I love you. I love what you're doing. I want to support your business and I want to do what we're doing in the podcast really well, but never at the expense of our relationship. And when you start there, <laughs> that that's your foundation. And and I also know not only that Lisa's going to do what she said she's going to do, she also is going to be willing to say, Sarah, this isn't working or Sarah, that was hurtful or Sarah, can we talk about something that's been bothering me? Because that really is where trust is formed is Mm -hmm. that I trust that she's willing to say the hard things, even if it's these moments of, oh my gosh, this is really hard. Do I want to go to this very vulnerable place? And yes, I do, because we said relationships were the most important thing. And, and it, hasn't been perfect. We've had some really, really difficult conversations. We've had some times where it's like, hey, I just need to step away for a little bit. You know, well, we figure this out and pray about it. We pray together. I think that's another piece that's been really important for our business to emphasize relationship. We pray. I can't say that I do that with very many other people, um, but it's been a commitment that Lisa and I have had to do that, to pray together and also to be praying for our business. Um, And so I I don't want to come across with like, we've done it perfectly. Perfectly. We've no, just we learned <laughs> some really hard lessons along the way. And I think that all of that is a testament to God's grace for us and his protection of us over this last year in the work that we're doing. One of the other big things that I've learned in this podcast is that you got to just do it. If you want to do it, you got to do it. You got to do it scared. You got to do it messy. We have certainly made a lot of mistakes in our podcast, but we've also just continued to do it. And even though it's been hard and there's been things, there's been times where we both wanted to give up. Thankfully, we both never wanted to give up at the exact same time. At the same time. (laughs) I agree. God is so Um, good. But I do feel like that there's been a lot of things where we have, I've been feeling a certain way about something and I'm like, shoot, I just don't know if I want to talk to Sarah about this because I don't want her to feel like we're give, I'm giving up on this or yada, yada. And then she'll come to me and be like, listen, there's something I need to talk to you about. And it's like, oh, I'm feeling the exact same way. And so in some ways, I it, it has been good. I really do think that we have made our heart posture of that we are trying to invite God into this podcast and into, mm-hmm. into our business. And he's been leading us. And therefore, I really feel like we've been on, aligned on a lot of things that normally could have been things that were deal breakers. And so mm-hmm. I'm really thankful for that. In the end, I believe that if we hadn't pushed through on some of these hard things and and done the podcast consistently week after week, we would have been disobeying what God was asking us to do. And ultimately that calling and that, that encouragement and that inspiration from God is m- bigger than the fear that we felt so that we were willing to actually step in and do it messy and to, to do it wrong and say, Oh, we forgot that. I mean, there were weeks where like, I didn't get the link in the email. Oops. I need to double check that. There were weeks where it's like, Lisa didn't, put the right date to put the podcast out. So it didn't go out until 10 a.m., you know, on the day of because it didn't go right. And having grace for that Mm -hmm. and and being willing to say, yep, that was a mistake. And we're moving on because there's always next week and there's, you know, grace enough to cover that. And and that has been a big encouragement to me in my own business is you have to do it scared. And that's why I'm glad with the podcast we've had each other so that we can 
step out and do that. Um, but it, that in 2024, I think that's what we are looking to do both in our personal business and in the podcast is to do it scared and to do it messy and to not wait, but to step out in faith and do what God has asked us to do. And do it confidently too of like, mm-hmm. I think sometimes we, we have imposter syndrome or we have that we don't feel like we're enough or we've done enough or that we're not good enough. And it's like, no, I, we do know what we're talking about. We've had, we've had 58 episodes of us talking about business and Mm -hmm. Christianity. That is a testament to us and also to what God has done in our lives. It's not just about us, but doing it scared is something that I think as business owners, one, we have to do. And one, that we are doing. Like if you own a business, you have done that to a certain extent and that you might need to do it again. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to do it again. And then Mm -hmm. you're going to do it again. And then you're Mm going to do it again. And that's, that's been a hard part too, is like, it's not just doing it scared one time. It's doing it scared every day. Because we knew that we wanted to break through that statistic of, you know, 50% of podcasters quit after eight episodes. We wanted to do that. And so in order to do that, that's what separates you from those who quit and those who don't is doing it scared. Mm -hmm. And doing it scared means going into 2024 with some new offers and some new things that we're doing here on the podcast. And we are super excited about what we are now being invited into and where we're headed for this next year. We've got some new offers that are designed around your feedback from you as listeners, not just what we thought we should create. We've had to let go of some things that we we thought we should do because we got better feedback from people who, who are actually in it and listening. And we know we have this system and a groundwork that's been laid for us in this first year. We had to be patient in the process of, of how we were growing and, and what we were doing, but we've been faithful to do what we really wanted to do in that first year. So much of it is you have to find your clarity. You have to find your voice. You have to find the path, you know, and you have to start somewhere and, and there's going to be so many iterations of what you do in, in your business. Like I look at my website from like when I started to my website now is so different because mm-hmm. it's my journey has been so different. So everything that you do is a journey in this podcast has certainly been a journey for us. And like Sarah said, a lot of it at the beginning was like, we just wanted to do it. We wanted to prove that we could do it. And we wanted to build the systems and the support foundation so that when it takes off even more so that it, we will be able to do it confidently because we have all this stuff already taken care of. We are just really looking forward to 2024 and what that's going to look like and just being confident in our offers and knowing that we're going to serve you guys really well, even in, in free capacities, continuing to do that, but then also other ways to work with us so that we can help you along in the journey and even get there even faster and better. And really empowering you to be that CEO of your business. We, we know that you have to be the leader of your business. We know a lot and we have a lot of great value to offer. And we feel very confident about that even more so than we started last January. And we also know that you know a lot and we want to empower you to use that confidence and knowledge that you have to build the business that God's asking you to build. And that's what we want to do in our own podcast. We want to serve our audience well, and we want to make some money this year and we want to increase what we're doing. And that takes revenue and income in order to do that. And so our invitation for you as we go into this new year is to join us on this journey as we're going alongside with it with you. Um, And we also want to encourage you to start making some investments for yourself like we have um, to to get where we are right now. And what does that look like for your business in the in the new year? And we'd love to invite you to partner with us. Um, listen in next week. We've got some new offers that we're going to have for you to share, um, to work with us so that you can have your best year yet. One of the things we want you to take away from this episode and from our podcast in general is that we are here to serve you We are here to cheer you on and we are here to empower you. We are not here to tell you, to should on you. you. (laughs) We said that at the same time. (laughs) We are here to help you build your business and we want to be an example to you. But we also want you to know that there's not just one way to do things. And we really want to step into that this year of like, 
there are a lot of things out there and we can help you find those things. And we're really excited about doing that. One of the ways that you can partner with us for free is to hop into our value vault. This is a new membership site that we have for you to hop into to get all of our guides and the the things that we've created in 2023. You can get them for free and you only have to sign up once. We're adding to that value vault regularly, um, but you can just sign up in one place and have all of those guides and resources for you available to become the CEO of your business. And so check out the link in our show notes. And lastly, we just want to thank you so much for following us on this journey, for following, for liking, for subscribing, for leaving ratings and reviews, for interacting with us on Instagram. We appreciate that so much because if you guys weren't here, it would just be Sarah and I sitting in a room talking into a microphone. And as fun as that would be... it really wouldn't have the impact that we wanted to have because we really want to make a difference in the kingdom and in people's businesses and in their lives. So thank you so much for being a part of that. Thanks for joining us for today's power packed episode. We hope you're feeling empowered to make the decisions to build your business your way with God by your side. If this podcast has given you the boost you needed, be sure to leave a review and spread the love by sharing it with your fellow biz besties. 